Hello, uh, my name is Stuart Campbell. I'm Head of Maths at Sheffield Girls and I'm going to tell you a little bit about A-Level Maths and A-Level Further Maths here at Sheffield Girls. So um, really what you want to know is what is A-Level Maths like? Um, well, here's some key information about the maths uh, course that we do here. We use Pearson at Excel as our exam board. Um, we've used them for many years and with the reformed A-Level we think that they give really good support to teachers and students um, and the resources that we've got are excellent. One of the things that we like about Pearson at Excel is the question style, which we think is clear and accessible and hasn't changed a great deal uh, from the previous specification. Um, as I've said before, we, we also think that their support is excellent um, and the resources that we've purchased uh, and created over the last few years are all tied into the scheme of work, which is based on uh, the, the syllabus in detail. Um, the examinations, you'd have three exams at the end of the two-year course. Two of those are in pure mathematics um, and one of those is in applied mathematics, so statistics and mechanics. Um, and calculators are allowed in all papers uh, for these exams. Um, so a little bit about what's in the pure papers. As I said, this makes up two-thirds of the qualification. You'll see topics which you've seen before, uh, so coordinate geometry, uh, things like quadratics and equations of circles equations of straight lines, um, but then these things are developed further um, and taken to a higher level. Um, you'll study trigonometry, but it will become much, much more than it was at GCSE. You will leave behind triangles mostly, and it'll be a, a much broader subject. Um, but you will also encounter topics that aren't on the GCSE at all. So logarithms, for example, uh, integration, which is the inverse of differentiation, which you will do uh, at GCSE if you're doing the IGCSE, um, and things like numerical methods. Um, I've put on the video um, here some examples of what A-level questions might look like, just so you can get an idea. I'm not going to dwell on these, um, but I'll leave you to pause the video and have a delve if you find that exciting and you want to have a look. So this is a question on vectors, and it gives you an idea of how they're structured. Normally you'll have a question like this and then a big space after in which to write your answers. Um, and here's another question which is a practical application of how you would use differentiation, how you would use calculus to solve problems in the real world. Um, the other one third of the course is, as I said, applied mathematics, so that's statistics and mechanics. And again, there's a lot of overlap here with things that you'll have seen before. So in statistics, you will look again at histograms, um, you'll look at finding averages and things like that. Um, but you'll see more interesting applications and you'll see more... Um, more challenging aspects. So, for example, we'll do probabilities, you can see on this slide, um, but it's encountering more complex situations. Um, the other half of that uh, exam is on mechanics, and this is really where um, the physics uh, and maths A-levels sort of overlap, because this is all about forces and motion, uh, acceleration, Newton's laws, and, and how things move and why they move the way they do. Um, so I've got a couple of examples of questions here. This one um, is a really good example of how statistics actually is really useful and interesting and helpful in the real world. Um, this is a question about a hypothesis test, which allows you to figure out whether something that is being claimed is actually legit legitimately true. Um, and here, an example of a mechanics question. Um, this is modelling the flight of a cricket ball um, that's been uh, hit by uh, a child. And we can model the path that that takes through the air. It's actually a quadratic graph, if you're interested, um, uh, and that's the sort of thing that you would do in the mechanics side. So, um, spoiler alert, maths is hard. Um, I, I put this slide in every year because um, you need to go into this course knowing that it's a challenging subject. It's very rewarding and hugely enjoyable if it's what you want to do, but don't underestimate it. Um, and uh, so you just need to be aware of that going into it. We also have a second A-level qualification that we offer called Further Mathematics. Um, this is a standalone qualification, it's completely separate from maths, but it has to be studied alongside maths. So you would generally do maths and further maths and usually two other A-levels. Um, what's it about? Well, it, it's um, essentially uh, another A-level which has more challenging content, but also content that just wouldn't fit onto the A-level. So it's a broader look at the world of mathematics um, and it's an excellent preparation for study at university. Um, new topics on there include things like complex and imaginary numbers, which are absolutely awesome. And I could go on about those for a long time, but 
I, I won't. Um, in terms of the papers, the way it's examined, you get the same amount of time um, being examined. You get six hours exams at the end of two years, but it's split between four papers. Three of those are on pure mathematics. So we have core pure one and two and further pure one. And then we have a little bit more mechanics in further mechanics one. Um, I've put an example here of a question which involves complex numbers. This is the sort of thing that you'll come across. Um, the little letter I there in the expression at the top represents the square root of minus one, which until now you'll have been taught is impossible. You can't square root a negative, but in further maths you can. You get an imaginary number. And it sounds like nonsense, but actually it's amazing and it opens up a whole realm of mathematics, um, which is really useful uh, in engineering and the sciences and actually just is fun. Um, so in general, if you're studying maths at Sheffield Girls, what's the experience like? So you'll have 10 one hour lessons per fortnight, five a week, which is in common with all A-level subjects. Um, one thing that is fairly unique to Sheffield Girls is that we offer the full time allocation for the further maths course as well. If you're interested in studying further maths, you might find that uh, other schools and sixth forms will have a reduced teaching time for further maths and that's typically because you can you can squeeze it in further maths candidates work a bit faster but we think that it's vital to have that extra time so that you can actually understand the topics in depth and really become fluent with these really rather difficult uh, subjects um, so each class at a level has two teachers or further maths will have three teachers um, with a wealth of experience delivering these curricula um, the teaching schemes were designed from the ground up when the A-Level was reformed in 2017. Um, so it's really designed to build throughout the two years um, so that you retain the subjects that you're learning even in, you know, as early as September in year 12 and build on those all the way through so that you're ready for your exams at the end of year 13. Um, we also have excellent preparation in the build-up to starting in year 12, uh, most notably our Bridging the Gap website, which I'll show you a little bit about now. Um, so this is the Bridging the Gap page on, our, uh, on Firefly and this will be shared with you if you're a student here um, it'll be shared with you uh, after you've completed your GCSEs but we also send out the link to external students so everyone has the opportunity to, to see this and prepare. So it's got some information um, about getting you ready uh, for study. But the key things that are on here are these two sections essential skills and foundation topics and I'll just show you a little bit about what's in here. If I click on essential skills um, these are the things that we expect you to be able to do fluently when you start uh, the A-level A-level course. Um, and but we don't leave you without any help. So if, for example, you're not sure about laws of indices, you can click on this section here and have a look. It's got um, a whole load of questions. If you scroll through, it's got lots and lots of practice. For each one of these, there is a video uh, with full solutions. Okay, so you can go through and do the ones that you feel like you might be rusty on uh, and watch the videos to, uh, to make sure that you know how to do it. Um, <clears throat> we also have a, uh, another section um, here called Foundation Topics. And in this section, uh, these are key skills which will be built upon at A-level. So you need to be ready to go with these, but you can also, and our students do, revisit these during the year um, to, as we're about to study topics to make sure that you are prepared. So in general, when you're studying um, maths at Sheffield Girls, the support is excellent. Um, we have weekly sixth form clinics, um, which are drop-in sessions open to any sixth former to come and ask for help. Um, from experienced teachers on uh, anything that they're struggling with. Um, but beyond that, um, anyone who's currently uh, you know, in year 11 um, at Sheffield Girls will tell you that uh, if you want help from your teachers, they will find a way to help you. So uh, if you need to see them at lunchtime and they're free, they'll make time for you. If you send them an email with a question, then when they get that email, they'll get back to you as soon as they can. Um, we also have um, a wealth of resources on our um, learning platform, Firefly, um, which I'll give you a brief sort of tour of now. Um, so this is the A-level support page on Firefly. And the main thing I want to show you is just the A-level resources. Um, we've created pages for every section of the course um, and every subsection. So if I take year one pure, this is the first thing that you would study uh, if you join us in year 12. You can see that for every uh, chapter of the textbook, We've got a section in here um, and if I click on one, uh, let's pick uh, graphs and transformations for example, what you'll see um, is that 
Each one will have uh, a little brief at the, at the top which tells you which bits you should already be able to, to do before you start studying this. It has the detail here from the specification. And then it's got lots of independent work which you can do from this website called Integral, uh, which we subscribe to. And at the bottom of every page, you have teaching videos um, sort of organized for you for everything that's in that chapter. And each one of these uh, you can expand and have a look. And they're generally packed full of examples. So you can do the examples and then watch the video to check um, that you understand. Um, so we also have a subscription to a website called Integral Maths, which um, you've seen links just now on the um, Firefly page to integral activities. There's a wealth of stuff on there uh, where you can study and check your solutions. There's interactive tests, there's all sorts of things on there um, just to help you with your independent study. We also find that every year we have students who are interested in applying uh, to some of the top universities, either for mathematics or for highly mathematical courses, so STEM subjects, engineering and so on. Um, and often for those subjects you will have to, your university will require that you do an entrance assessment. Some of those are in November, some of them are actually in the summer when you do your A-levels. Um, and we have been preparing students for these for years. Um, we've got members of the teaching staff who have taken those exams themselves many years ago um, and uh, regularly helping students get ready for even the most challenging of these which include uh, the step papers which are required for Cambridge and some of the other top universities. Um, so if you're looking at other six forms and you're interested in maths or STEM subjects make sure you ask them whether they can provide that because we are very used to doing that um, and we do that to a high standard. Um, in, in terms of what this all means for outcomes, um, we uh, are really proud of the results that we've had over the years and particularly since the reformed A-level came in. Um, you can see the results from recent years on the screen here um, and hopefully they speak for themselves. Um, we also have, as a huge advantage here, small class sizes. Um, again this year, looking at the six classes that we have across year 12 and year 13 for maths and further maths, the average number of students per class is 10. Um, so you've got a lot of teacher time um, to allow the teachers to really uh, help you with your studies. So um, this is really, really important, perhaps the most important slide. Why study maths at all? Okay, some good reasons here. It might be because you know what you want to do at university. Okay, you want to do maths or you want to do a STEM subject. Um, for a lot of these subjects, maths is required. And for some of them, they might require further maths. But more commonly, they say that further maths is desirable. Um, it might be, however, that the reason for choosing maths is because you don't know what you want to do. Maths is a way of keeping doors open to you. Um, the Russell Group have a list of what they call facilitating subjects, and maths and further maths are on that list. And all that means is they are subjects that those universities really rate highly. Um, and of course, maths is viewed favourably by employers. But I'm going to skip to the bottom here. The real reason, the best reason to choose this subject is because you love it. Um, Maths is a wonderful subject, it can bring you so much pleasure and enjoyment and interest um, but if it's going to be a grind because actually you don't really like it then you're not going to find the motivation for two years to work hard and this goes for all your subjects, if you pick something that you enjoy um, and really really want to do then you will flourish because you'll have the motivation to do what you need to do. So, I'm going to leave it there. We're finishing with a little challenge. Um, we do this every year, we set a little competition. On the next slide, I'm going to show you um, a diagram, and there's a proof to do. And this doesn't require any maths beyond GCSE, um, but just requires a little bit of lateral thinking. Um, so if you'd like to enter our competition, uh, you can have a go at this proof, and then take a photo of your solution and email it to me at the address that's on the screen uh, by the 7th of December. And the most interesting or unique or elegant or um, just the, the one that makes us go, hmm, the best solution will receive a copy of this awesome book about the maths of Christmas. Uh, so here is the picture. Um, have a go if you're interested. And if you have any questions following this video, um, you can always email me. So good luck, girls, making your choices. Um, and thank you for listening.